Located at the end of Alaska's famed Inside Passage, Lynn Canal is the deepest fjord in North America. The steep shores of Lynn Canal are home to mountain goats, brown bears, and resting sea lions. The waters of Lynn Canal are rich with marine life and serve as the marine highway that provides access to Alaska's capital city. When Governor Frank Murkowski came into office, a major emphasis was placed on building roads. A top priority was the Juno Road project, in addition to the existing road which currently dead ends 40 miles from downtown Juno. The proposed road would extend 50 miles along the steep slopes of Lynn Canal, ending at a ferry terminal at the Katsahine River. The proposed road extension will not continue to Haines or Skagway. Drawn to the beauty of Lynn Canal, Mike Miller and several of his friends have spent the last decade climbing, traversing, and exploring the east side of Lynn Canal. In May 2007, Will Wacker and Mike Miller finally completed the route all the way to Skagway. Along this final leg of exploration, Will and Mike traversed the northernmost quarter of the proposed Juno Road. Yeah. There's where the road is going. We started at um, the base of Mount Sinclair, which is also uh, where a large creek comes out called Yergelga, and we continued from that point up the next 10 miles to the uh, Katsahine River. We thought we could do the whole thing the Skagway in three to four days, and it was a lot more work than we thought. And it ended up taking us five full days non-stop. Man, we're only halfway through this one crux section, huh? There's a marker right there. It goes straight down into this. You know, we really didn't want to walk the road markers at all. I mean, it was kind of interesting sometimes because, again, we would just be forced off the beach and we get forced up and there they would be so it would be obvious to follow them for a little ways just to see what they did and how they figured out they were going to get around some of these gullies and ravines and um, a lot of it was pretty much just established goat trails is what they marked so they just picked the easiest way they could find and when it became yeah, right impassable here. the markers would just stop where's the, where the markers go from there more they quit. They just quit. Huh. Maybe they didn't like this one. Oh, there's one up there in the trees. Oh my god. Wow, they just there. so they just jump right up there. That big solid rock wall. We were flabbergasted. It was like it was shocking because it was just so unreal that you could you think you could build a road there through that terrain you know and uh, you know just to make that energy to get out there on those cliffs or exposed slopes and climb up in that tree and over that cliff and and mark it it was uh it was almost comical at some points look at that wild thing huh oh my <laughs> god how are they gonna fetch a tunnel Huge. We encountered um, at least a half dozen avalanche, avalanche bass that still had uh, huge amounts of snow in them. Some of them were 12 feet deep. I mean, look what we're heading for. Well, what do we do? We're going to go way up. Because I don't see. About a lot. We could smell the sea lions uh, probably two miles away or three miles away. You could you could sense that smell. 
eventually you can start picking up that sound and uh, it would take hours and hours before we finally arrived at that destination, Grand Point. There were easily over 400 sea lions that night uh, along the, the cliff bands. And over the years, we have seen uh, lots of smaller haul-outs all up and down the East Island Canal, where there's gatherings of anywhere from 50 to 100 sea lions just hanging out in their natural habitat along the cliffs. All the way to the beach. The proposed road would end at the Katsahin River, where a ferry terminal will be built. A ferry will then be required to shuttle vehicles and passengers to Haines and Skagway. We reached the Katsahin on day two. It was a full two days of nonstop travel, and uh, it was very relieving once we hit the Katsahin, where it was a good place to take a break and regroup. As of October 2007, DOT's cost estimate for the project rose to $374 million. If it is built, the proposed Juno Road project will be among the most expensive transportation projects built by the state of Alaska in coming decades. At a time when federal funding for transportation is in a steep decline, Alaska is faced with tough choices. Many, many local transportation priorities could be funded for the cost of the proposed Juno Road. The whole time we were walking through there, we were just thinking to ourselves, we wish that somebody else could be seeing what we're seeing. Just really being out there to see it and um, really get a sense of what's going on out there. It's just amazing how steep, rugged, and fluid everything is and I think if they were out there and really looked at it and, and um, saw the terrain for themselves they'd be really questioning themselves what they were getting themselves into.